Hello, and welcome to Let's Give It a Shot. I'm Colonel DeFrog, and I'm going to be your host for this little segment. So, I'm not the only one who has just spent a bunch of money in a Steam sale and ended up with a big old library full of games that, uh... I have no idea if they're even good or not, if, you know, it's even worth keeping on my computer. Well, that's kind of the idea with this. GOG, Eve, Steam, you know, Green Man Gaming, they've given us so many different ways to spend money in the digital market, and we've all got the big, old libraries just taking up space, and often not even on our computer. So, I figured I'd go ahead and track back through a bunch of the different things I've bought, and, you know, thought looked interesting at one point, never even played, and uh, decided to come back and see if it's actually was worth my money, uh, if I'm going to play it in the future, and if you might want to play it too. It's a way to give a little bit of love to those games that, you know, maybe didn't get quite as much attention, maybe they did get plenty of attention, but they're on my computer. So here's my promise to you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play these games. And it's going to be for, you know, a, a decent amount before I record, and I'm going to go ahead and give you at least 15 minutes worth of gameplay. That's right, I'm going to torture myself, or enjoy myself, for 15 minutes. Uh, your suggestions are valid, if I don't have it, uh, obviously I can't play it, but, you know, maybe I'll decide that uh, it's worth putting on to my thing, and, and as always, if you go ahead and gift it to me, uh, I will torture myself with that, so if you have any terrible games that you want to watch someone suffer through, well, uh, now's your chance. Anyway, our first little one is Receiver, and this one actually caught my eye quite a while ago. It's... well, you're gonna learn pretty quickly that I have a tendency to really love simulation games, and I would actually call this a sim. Um, though it's obviously somewhat of a strange one. I mean, after all, where's the tank or the mech or any of that kind of good stuff? Well, it's a gun sim, a gun handling sim. And the idea was that this person wanted to go ahead and create a first-person shooter, and they did this on a really short time period, that would be really about gun handling mechanics. So if ever there was that mythical game that's going to teach you how to shoot a gun, well, here it is. The other interesting thing about this game is that, well, oh, you saw how fast I died there, it's honestly kind of a survival horror title. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, the story behind it is, whoa, pretty unnerving, you die really fast, and you don't have much in the way of resources. After all, I just, uh, shot my cylinder there, and, uh, I don't know if I even have any more bullets, and if I don't, I'm in trouble. So, uh, let's see. Did they give me more? Yay, they gave me more. So, yeah, I just, you know, shot through three bullets, missed them all, now I actually have to load my gun, which is a revolver. It's a Smith & Wesson of some sort, I believe. Um, you know, close it back up, cock the hammer if I want to, and go back to fight that hoverbot thing, which will kill me with an airborne taser in one hit. And, you know, the shooting is not particularly accurate. Um, if you put the sights on, you're good, but um, the way that you hold this, it's far enough away that you're going to miss some shots. Or, at least, I'm gonna miss some shots, uh... I'm not terribly good at these games. Okay, I guess, but... And, you saw that there, um... It actually had me go ahead and make sure to, uh... When I extracted the shells from the cylinder, that some of them stuck on and I had to push the extractor a couple extra times. Uh, as I understand it, uh, some will, you know, stick in there because the gases from firing will stick them in there. And I think that's a cool idea that they did that. And, um, yeah, this game doesn't control, you know, like, on the dot particularly well, which is kind of a hallmark of old-school survival horror titles. They use the actual, you can't do this very well to, uh, ramp up the horror and take away some power from you. Um, that's not to say that this is a bad controlling game, not by any means. Oh, dear, here we go again. Um, it does what it does, it's just complex enough as to give you trouble. And the other thing, and the thing that's gonna probably kill me horribly, is the fact that, um, like most survival horror, you really need to husband your resources. And I'm down to six bullets in this gun. 
I started out with a decent amount. Oh, uh, also, yes, you can spin the cylinder with the gun. Um, so, it really becomes a very tense game. Um... Okay, so I now have ten bullets. And, um, though you're not seeing it at the moment, the game does go ahead and give you this randomly... Uh, not randomly generated, but procedurally generated. That's the word I'm looking for. Procedurally generated world where things are in different places and it connects these different rooms, uh, like building blocks together in uh, certain patterns and you have to go through them. And the point of the game is that you're supposed to be absorbing these 11 tapes that have information on them about something called the Mind Kill, and uh, being a receiver and that kind of thing. Uh, and it's a pretty creepy, uh, kind of meta-horror tale that they're trying to tell here. And, um, once you die, you die, and it takes you one shot to die. You go ahead and you, uh, get you know, randomly put back in with, uh, whatever way that your gun is, whichever one of the guns, there's more than one in the game. I've got the revolver at the moment, like I said. Um, it's also got a Colt 1911 and a Glock of some sort in there. Um, yeah, it's not the best optimized thing in the world, as you can see, uh, sometimes you, oh dear, have, uh, problems when it's, and there I died again. Wonder what gun I'll get this time. But it puts you in this random state. Sometimes you have a flashlight, sometimes you have a bunch of bolts, sometimes you have very few. Oh, I've got the Glock this time. Now, the Glock's kind of interesting because it's actually fully automatic. And I've got it... Okay, I should have that off from fully automatic because that is just a waste of bullets. I did play this a little bit before uh, going ahead and doing this uh, just to, you know, not be completely faffing around with it. Um, one of the things that you find when uh, you're going ahead and playing as with the uh, automatic weapons is that they tend to require a lot more work consolidating the bullets and um, making sure that your slide had, uh, th sorry, that your magazines have a, you know, a full top off in them. And um, Multiple uh, magazines really don't seem to help too much. Clips, magazines, whatever. I I'm not that big of a gun guy. I really don't know which one I should be using. I'm sure someone will correct me and then say that I'm a horrible, terrible person for not getting it right. Oh, and dear, I just wasted a bullet. So, uh, there we go. My uh, incompetence with guns has been thoroughly put there. I was actually trying to hold back the slide and check the chamber, which you do like this. And yeah, I've got a round chambered, and something wants to kill me now. I have no idea what. Uh, there's only two types of enemies in the game, both of which will kill you extremely quickly. One is that hoverbot with the taser, that's kind of a melee enemy, and the other one is this thing, which is a turret. And it will spin around, and if it sees you, it shoots you, and you die. Um, there's actually locational damage in this game, which is really pretty neat. Uh, there's the thing that lets the see, there's the power source, there's the ammunition supply. Uh, you can also lock it in one position by shooting it in different places. Um, and yes, one bullet will kill you and that thing fires automatically. I actually had, before I was recording, uh, a bit of a scare when um, I shot out the ammo supply on one of these things and it actually went ahead and shot one more bullet. It still had one in the chamber. Um, luckily it missed me, but, uh, oh boy, was not expecting that. Um, but yeah, you start out with a certain amount of resources, and you gotta get through, and you can pick them up off the ground, along with the tapes that you're supposed to learn about, and, um, it goes ahead and tells you this story of everyone being killed by, uh, this thing called the Mind Kill, and it also mentions that if you're receiving this uh, narrative through a fictional sort that you're on a different plane of reality than they can actually get to, and uh, it takes some shots at media, I guess. Uh, it's appropriately creepy. Uh, the music, I'm not sure if you can hear, is just kind of this little repeating track in the back. But between that and the fact that, you know, there's these open, starkly lit levels, I guess you could say. Um, the lack of resources, the lack of, well, not effective controls, but easy controls, shall we say. 
and get you killed awfully fast. I mean, oh, hey, I had the gun, I put a bunch of bullets towards it, and I missed every time, and then it, you know, killed me right off. Okay, so it looks like we've got the Glock again, and what's that full auto V? Okay, so turn that off. Um, check the clip, check it. Oh, boy, not very many bullets in there. Move all the bullets from it, put it in here, take this other one, put as many bullets in as possible. And yes, I know, I, I'm narrating a very boring thing. And release the slide. Oh, Lord, not again. I have a tendency to, uh, you know, pop that bullet out and, you know, pretend if I guess you could say so. Put it back in there. And, uh, yeah, if you hold on to the slide release and pull, you get to check the chamber. And you can see we've got a bullet in there, so we should be all good to go through the levels. Um, now, down there, those little glowing spots, that's resources, and I think that's actually a tape down there. So we're going to see if we can get down to it, because actually, you know, hearing a little bit of, about the game's plot might be... Uh, bit more interesting than watching me ramble. Oh, hey, look, a flashlight. So, you can pick up stuff off the ground. Now we've got a flashlight so we can see a little better. You can uh, go ahead and... What's the button for that? Put flashlight in inventory. Okay, yeah, you can uh, go ahead and uh, put the flashlight in the inventory to save the battery. And yes, I've been informed that it does, in fact, have a battery that runs down over something like, oh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, frankly, the amount of time you're likely to be playing this, you might as well keep it out. Another cool thing is, if you actually watch this, uh, you don't have the hands uh, on the gun or the flashlight, but you can kind of see how it changes position, and uh, apparently these are supposed to be the carrying position and uh, for, you know, tactical use of a flashlight. The other thing is, if you take out the clip... E button. Well, you still have that flashlight out there. You still got the gun in hand. You got the clip in hand. And uh, so, how's the flashlight there? According to the developer, that's you holding it in your teeth, which uh, it, I thought was a pretty neat touch. Uh, the guy really did commit to this idea. Uh, this was created by a group of Wolfire Games. That was another cool thing. It, you don't drop immediately when you take the first bullet. You know, it kind of the bleed out and strength goes out of your thing. Uh, just a cool little touch in my opinion um but yeah this uh guy wolfire his uh games has made a bunch of really interesting stuff so far as i can tell we're probably gonna be seeing at least a little bit more of his stuff on here um just because it's you know those cheapy kind of games that you pick up and you forget that you even really had and oh lord i just dropped the clip that was a really bad idea okay get that in the gun there Use that slide um what am I forgetting? Pull back the hammer. Okay. So, gun's ready to fire. And this is a Colt 1911. And I'm going to die horribly. Because that's this kind of game. Oh, hey, one of the tapes. So, we'll see what it has to say and also get some more bullets. If you are listening to this tape, it means you have survived the mind kill. Okay, yeah. Previous so, I've heard this, this one this before. Tape, it's going blank, on about the mind kill and how there is this, you know, path completely... Forward. This is the time that we have prepared for. <sighs> Unknown enemy that's uh, put firearm. all these things in your way, and you've got to, you know, make it out and survive, and boy, it's really dark in this room. Some of you will be familiar with firearms from right about our now. Um, but, but yeah, it tells you about the different list of tapes, and they don't uh, come in any survive the uh, uh, You event. can end up getting, you know, case, one of the last few tapes first, and the uh, firearm you have been issued is uh, there's one that actually tells you how to use the Colt 1911, magazine. which was the first gun that was you put into this game. You have also been issued one um, tape deck with headphones and two double But A yeah, it uh, Once you have checked goes your on and on and uh, it tells you essentially and your and be whole careful. thing. I think the that the last dream, tape, kill drones, which is, I believe, location. called Awake, it um, goes ahead and requires you to get last. But uh, here's another one. We'll see what it has to say. A receiver is said to be awake when he is able to get a completely clear signal. Okay, so Free this is getting more into the idea that in this state, um, he will be able you have to, to learn all this information in before you can be enlightened and, and uh, normal positivity. Uh, you've got Although the ability to fight against, you see these to things. Through are um, you're already ability. immune to the mind kill no for some reason. I, I don't know exactly why, but... Uh, 
humans exist in two worlds. There is also a, reality, you know, a B, you, uh, they live and work as you go through the game, bodies. you'll actually learn that there in is an explanation a, for the respawn system. Uh, the idea is that your mind isn't dead, just free. your body and the body's a but reflection of the mind, the all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that goes ahead and lets you uh, respawn even though... It is though this reason why humans are I guess that one doesn't make quite as much sense, considering that your mind is supposed to be, you know, of all untouched by this, but, well, you've been gone ahead and, uh, you've lost all the information that you had beforehand, so yeah, I guess that doesn't make all that much sense. Um, other interesting things about this game, outside of, you know, just the fact that for, uh, I think this was a 24-hour hour game jam game, the fact that it's, uh, really as polished as it is and as interesting and plays as well as it does, um, says a lot about it. Uh, that little loading hiccup that you saw there, that wasn't an artifact of the video. Uh, you will run into those when you're transferring Ogier between um, the different blocks of the building, and they can get you killed. In fact, they will get you killed quite a bit. Uh, did I get shot? No, I did not get shot. Okay. Um, another interesting thing, which I'll show you now that I've just died again, um, is that... Running in this game is not the matter of holding a shift key, which I was actually rather pleased to see. I thought it was a neat touch. Um, excuse me while I prep my gun here. Um, there we go. Hammer's back. Is the safety off? Yeah. Yeah, safety's off. Um, is the fact that you can't run with your gun up, just won't let you. But if you take your gun down, and uh, you actually have two options of holding up your gun, like in most games, you've got either the one where you, you know, click, right click, and you aim down sights. I believe controls are fully rebindable, though I'm not for certain on that. Or you can just hold, uh, tap Q, and it'll lock it in that position. But when you've got your gun down, you can actually run, which is accomplished, I don't know if you can hear it, by going ahead and tapping on the W key. So I'm actually, you know, running and sprinting, which probably wouldn't work for most games, but um, I believe the idea was for this game, which is, you know, just experimental as all hell, and also, you know, kind of a survival Some horror game of sorts. Some receivers believe the message, uh, but that was the right unable way to, do to it. hear the source I, I gotta say, it's a pretty cool idea. We have developed a mind tech called Clear Tape to so, aid in um, receiving. Your subconscious mind has been yeah, it, by it's a fun game. I actually, to wean you, you know, from this I can play this one for hours. It's just, its uh, response to maybe I'm weird. Advantage. And uh, like I by said, I, the I, I like simulators. I love simulators. You, you're going to reduce the that. symptoms um, of media damage. So, you know, the idea of a more complex control scheme and learning to master it really does appeal to me. And that one goes right back to the beginning. Frankly, my first game that I ever played was X-Wing Collector's Edition CD-ROM back on Windows 3.1, uh, though I think that ran out of DOS. Not entirely certain about that. Boy, <laughs> yeah. And the fact that I've forgotten that actually kind of makes me sad. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been the type of games that I've always liked, and actually seeing that in a first-person shooter is a pretty cool thing. Um, it, does it hold up as a, you know, full game? Eh, well, this thing only cost me, what was it, $5? And that wasn't even on any type of sale, so far as I remember. Uh, it's really small footprint on your hard drive. Um, and it's just so enjoyably creepy. Um, I'm very glad that I gave this game a shot. I honestly feel like more people should do so. Um, I think that this kind of gaming experience... Ouch. Um, actually really does have a place. Um, I think that it really could make for a very interesting, um, yeah, a very interesting type of game. Oh, dear. I don't have any bullets in there. That could be a problem. Uh, one of the things which I have been informed is this game can spawn you with absolutely no bullets, and, uh, that is pretty much a death sentence. And, uh, six bullets, that isn't exactly great either. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to see this game, um, be either expanded, which probably isn't gonna happen, considering that the person's working on a new game entirely, um, you know, I'd like to see 
something more happen out of this. Uh, maybe someone take this idea of, you know, more realistic gun handling in a game and make a more complete game of it. It could be interesting to actually see people working in, um, like, a multiplayer game to actually have to control their guns. Um, and, I mean, there's some fair argument against it as well, but, um, message, but are yeah, I'm just kind of feeling like a, uh, themselves. well, I, I hate to, you know, be one of those people who says, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, zombie up on this, but I, I could see, like, a, a zombie survival game, uh, working pretty well with this kind of game mechanic. Um, it'd be more hardcore, more along the whole DayZ type of, uh, zombie survival game, but, external it, frankly, that's one of those ones where it really works, or, um, oh, uh, I would love to see a Cthulhu Mythos you game that uh, clear tape, but use this kind of thing. Uh, maybe also in put in play. a melee system that works there. Um, there's some really interesting static. old games After that try to uh, incorporate a more in-depth melee mechanic that uh, I would love to see like a Cthulhu Mythos set in the 1920s or so, or 1930s that went ahead and uh, really kind of delved into the guns of the time period, some nice historical ones. I mean, hey, we've already got the Colt in the 1911 in here. But, you know, like a Tommy gun, that kind of thing, and really made them, um, oh, here, I'm done. Uh, it really made it a larger part of gameplay. But, yeah, um, for this first episode of Let's Give It a Shot, I'm glad I gave this a shot, and I honestly think you should, too. My name's Colonel DeFrog, and I'm signing off.